Hi, my name is Cathy Millett, and this week we're looking at creating a damp earth effect on our culvert diorama. Damp earth is literally everywhere in most countries. Um, you might live somewhere that's full of arid desert, but everywhere else you'll find earth that gets wet. And very simply put, it gets darker as it gets wetter. So if you want to model damp earth, the first thing you need to look at is the colour of your earth, because the chances are it will be dark, almost black. So what are we going to do this week? We're going to show how to make puddles of damp earth and put them in place on a diorama. This is our last diorama that we're going to be doing. And for this one, I want a muddy effect, a watery, muddy effect. And what we haven't done so far is really explore how water changes the colour of the environment. So this is all very pale. And when I did one of my previous dioramas, the um, rusty pipe, it didn't look quite right because it stayed pale. And in your head, you know that wet areas are darker than dry areas. If you look at a pavement and you look at a drop of water into it, um, around a puddle, you get a dark area and then it goes lighter. So what I'm going to do is think about different ways we can make this look dark and still maintain the fact that this is letting a little bit of water out and it's running into here. So the first thing I need to do is create the dam for the puddles. And there's a couple of ways I could do this. One, I could use my favoured grout and just build this up into um, sort of heaps, basically, and put little dim dents and dimples in and make a puddle. Now, I've already done that once on a um, previous DVD uh, video, which you can see. So it seems a bit old hat to go through it again. So I'm gonna try a new product. Now this is MIG Rough Texture Mud. And you're supposed to use it um, on tanks and stuff like that and in scenery and, and all sorts of things. So I'm gonna have a go and see what it looks like. Oh, here we go. Looks chocolatey, and if anybody knows me, you'll know how much I love chocolate. So already it's off to a good start. I'm going to try a cocktail stick for putting it on. I don't want a huge amount on here. So this blob is probably enough to push out and do the whole area. So it didn't stick amazingly well to the um, dry culvert. So I put a little bit of water on with a brush and it is stuck a lot better. Um, I will admit though that eventually I got out a brush and some water and used that to smooth it. And I think that's because I was very worried it's a very gritty looking texture. And actually when you're doing water modeling, quite often it's smooth because the water's run past and smooth things out. So I wanted to make sure that I built up a nice layer, thick enough to get a puddle in there that would hold a decent amount of resin and look, um, well, show off the resin to best effect. But also I then carried it on into the stream to make sure that it all tied in. So this has been baking in my porch for a couple of days. We've had a hot turn, which is beautiful and unusual. And what I need to do now is you can see this looks damper than this. And actually it's because this has a slightly wet look to it still, even though it's solid and you can see it's actually cracked in a couple of places, whereas this doesn't. And that's all about coloring and texture. So now I'm gonna paint this. And I'm gonna do it in a dark color. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a nice um, humus rich, sort of dark, fertile looking earth. So I've got a brush and let's use that one. I'm just sitting here in water. And I'm just gonna paint it a bit darker and get it to flow in. Um, I'm going to eventually add um, some MIG washes and other things to give it a bit of variety. But for now, I just want it to be darker as a base. So the tips coming out and actually this bit through here all look a reasonable colour. And I'm going to flow it down into this area to tie it all together. And this will be one of my bottom culverts is the way I'm describing this. So that when I um, put it on the layout, it's one of the lower ones. So it's going to be wetter slightly. A lot of the ones I'm going to have will be further up the slope and slightly dry it. Right, well, the, um, the paint's dried. It's quite a bit darker than it was, but I just want to give it a bit of variety. So I'm going to put on a MIG dark wash, which will darken it a little bit more 
and also add just a little bit more texture to this because it will sit in the gaps, especially at the bottom. So I'm just going to put it on and let it flow everywhere and then let it dry. Okay, I've just put a little bit extra in those puddles so they'd be a little bit darker. Um, so there we go. Just leave that for quite a few hours now to dry. So here we go. I've got my more or less dry. It's actually quite damp looking, isn't it? What I am going to do is just add a bit of green in. Um, I did this with the grill culvert last week and I think it does make a difference. It, um, it just adds to it because if I look at all my photos, there's definitely a lot of green in the cement areas. Um, well, it's mortar on my areas. And I just think this is just slightly lacking here. So I think a little bit of this green moss wash is just gonna work wonders. So next up on this, we're eventually gonna put some resin in, but I want to put in the, the waterfall effect out of the um, culvert first. So I'm gonna use acrylic art gloss medium. And I got this from Hobbycraft. It's an amazingly um, a good shop in the UK for getting things. And all I'm gonna do is I'm using a cocktail stick because it's easy to get it a long way down. I'm just gonna put it down the pipe and drag it forward and just spread it from side to side to try and get it to um, look like there's water in the pipe and it's fairly steady. I could put some, um, and I will put some epoxy down there as well, but this just starts it off. And what I'm looking for really here is the epoxy will, I'm gonna put this, it will kind of spread through because it's like water. So wherever I want body in my water, um, like on the waterfall section, I have to do it with some other, and probably on the end, some other um, implement or medium and that's where this comes in. So it's just gonna cascade out through here and run into here. And also, because I don't think this is quite necessarily as dammed as I want for my, um, Poxy, I'm just gonna put a bit of a dam there. And um, I'm definitely gonna put a dam at the bottom here. So I'm just gonna put some this here to just build up a little bit of um, safety perhaps for my um, water not running away. So this is nearly set up the gloss medium. The only thing I will say, I'm just gonna get a brush, this grass does go everywhere. You do need to make sure you take it out all the time. Um, even though it's been hoovered and whatever, it still likes to go places. So now it's time to put on the epoxy resin. So I'm just gonna mix that quickly. If you wanna know how to mix epoxy resin, I have a video on that. So go look in that and come back when you've watched it. The most important thing now, having mixed my resin, is to get this off so if it drips, um, <laughs> It drips onto the newspaper and doesn't run underneath and gunk and stick everything to everything. Now, as you can see, yeah, as you can see, um, there's not a lot of damming on this, so it is going to run off. And Varitex Light originally was designed to run off the edges, so they are made to run. Now, this is magic water. I've been a bit zealous on my mixing, so it's a little bit bubbly at the moment, but it degasses incredibly well, so I'm not worried about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just literally drip this on. Um, and actually first, before I put too much on there, I'm gonna drip some into my culvert, which will run straight back out, but at least it will give it a bit of a gloss. I dripped it onto the central puddle and then I'm, I just tilted the diorama a little bit to run it around into the different areas. And actually over the next few hours, it's spread out through most of it anyway. I'm just going to give it the good old breath to get rid of the bubbles. And being magic water, it's degassed straight away. So that's where I want the depth of water to be. And it was actually staying in here, in this central pebble, quite well because of the, um, the little dam that I put on. So that's it. I'm just going to leave that to drip. So the resin set. Oh, take it back. Resin isn't quite set, I had a gunk on my hand there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just put 
some a little bit of pattern in here. I don't want a lot, but I don't think um, water should ever be entirely smooth. It just looks a little bit fake if it is. So just a bit coming down this main section um, because there's water coming out of here. And just to make sure there's a little bit of a dribble down there. Let's put a little bit of thickness in. There we go. Okay, so that's just going to sit there and just that little small amount of rippling will make all the difference. So this is the final result. I'm very pleased with how it came out. There's some damp earth. You can see the water flowing out of the culvert and around. Still needs to dry in a couple of places. The um, acrylic gloss medium just needs to dry through. But looking good and it really does have that watery effect. So very pleased. <laughs>